goodness and your mercy to us. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for transforming us from the inside out. Uh, we thank you for the healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for the strength of being in your presence, Father. And we thank you we will draw from that strength every day, all day. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. So, I hope you bought your page turning fingers because we're going to look at some scriptures today. Uh, we're going to start out with Numbers chapter 14. Deuteronomy. You got your Bible? Too? No. You got your Bible? Yeah, right. Let's look at that. All right, Numbers chapter back to Numbers 13. We're going to talk about um, <coughs> verse 26. So there was some uh, so Moses and the children of Israel were going into the land of Canaan and they sent out um, 10 spies to look, oh no not 10 um, 12 12 spies to uh, to search the land um, to see what was going on in the land um, to see whether they could take it over, right? And so in verse 26 in chapter 13 they went and it came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where you sent us. And surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So they showed them the fruit of the land. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and on the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. So we're talking about all the enemies they have in the new land. Okay. Verse 30. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Everybody say, well able. Well able. Right, say, we are well able to overcome. We are well able to overcome. Now, Caleb was of the tribe of With Judah. How did you know? You know what I was about to say. You know about that Judah. So, Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. Um, let's see. And he's saying, listen, everybody else is saying, can't take this over because the men are too strong and all that and they got all types of enemies but Caleb said we are well able to overcome it verse 31 but the neck but the men that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we they were scared and they were weak and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come as which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So there was a man, all, all the twelve spies in Joshua. They sent an evil, all of them sent it, came back an evil report. They said, they're too big, they're too strong, we're not going to win. But Caleb said, we are well able 
to overcome. Verse 14, I mean chapter 14, verse 1. All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And so people were crying because they listened to who? They listened to the, the spies about a negative report, right? They're like, oh, we're going to die out here. They're going to they're gonna kill us. They're going to hurt us. We're going to die out here in the wilderness. And so they cried. And so they decided that they were going to appoint themselves a captain and go back to Egypt. <coughs> okay? Verse 6. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company and of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. A land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Everybody say, they are bread for us. They are bread bread for us. us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So I'm talking today about how faith sees your enemies. We want to see our enemies like Joshua and Caleb saw their enemies. They are bread for us. Okay? <coughs> you don't want to be the one that sees your enemies and sees opposition and says, oh, it's going to kill me. Oh, they can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do this. I can't do that. You want to look at your opposition. You want to look at your promised land and say, we are well able to overcome it. You want to look at the vision that God has given you and say, it's a good land. It's a land of milk and honey, and God is going to deliver it to us. God is going to give it us. Remember, that's what he said. God is going to give it to us. Okay, so faith sees things in God's power. You can have what God says you can have. You can have holiness. You can have deliverance. You can have the fruits of the Spirit. You can have the power of the Holy Spirit. You can have the vision and the purpose that God has given you in your life. Amen? Amen. We are well able. Okay? We are well able to overcome our enemies. We are well able to accomplish everything that God puts in our heart. We have to have that attitude of faith. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Psalms chapter 18. (coughs) Psalms chapter 18. So what? Did you pick the wrong one? <laughs> it says to the chief musician. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Verse one. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. If you know it, say it. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me, surrounded me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, Hallelujah. even to his ears. Hey. And the earth shook. Hey, the earth shook and yes, trembled. Yes, the foundations yes, also of the hills yes, moved yes, and were shaken. Yes, because he was wrong. Because he was wrong. Yes, God. See, he called upon the Lord. He said, I will call upon the Lord, yes, Lord. who is worthy to be praised. So shall hey. I be saved from my enemies. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we just talked about. We just prayed about that. We prayed about calling out to the Lord, holding on to his hand, calling out to him, crying out to the Lord. And what happened? The earth shook. God will answer. God will move things. God will change things. God will save you from your enemies. 
God will move things out of the way for yes, you. Lord. We are well able to overcome. Yes, Lord. You are well able to overcome yes, any enemy that's, that's in your way. Any opposition that's in your way, you are well able to overcome it. Yes, Lord. They are bread for us. Everybody say they are bread for us. They are bread. <laughs> we're gonna live, we're gonna live off of, of our enemies, right? Yes, Lord. Right? You said they are bread for us. Okay. Uh, let's go to down to 46, verse 46 in Psalms 18. He said, The Lord live it. Actually, let's go up. Well, I don't know. Yeah, let's go. 46. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me and subdues the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. <coughs> Yea, you lift me up above those that rise up against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to thee. O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto your name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. So God, he delivers you from your enemies. Okay? Amen. He says, it's God that avenges me and subdues the people under me. Yes, he delivers me from my enemies. Yes, so how faith sees your enemies, <laughs> faith sees your enemies as God being able to deliver you from your enemies. God being able to avenge you and subdue your enemies. You don't have to fight the battle on your own. You call on God and he will subdue your enemies. Mm, yes, Lord. Okay? He will put them under you. He, will, he said, you lift me up above those that rise up against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. God will lift you up above those that rise up against you. God will lift you up above those that rise up against you. Let's turn to Psalms 118. We are well able to overcome any opposition that's in our way. We are well able to overcome and possess the land that God has given us. You are well able to overcome and possess the promise that God has given you. You are well able to overcome and possess the blessing that God has given you. We have to believe those things. We have to be of a different spirit. The Bible says Caleb and Joshua were of what? A different spirit than the other twelve. We have to be of a different spirit than those that are defeated in their own mind. We have to be of a different spirit and say, I am well able to overcome. Um, Psalms 118, verse 8. Actually, let's go to verse 5. Because this is tying in with what we were just praying about. Verse 5, it said, I called upon the Lord... In distress, mm -hmm. I call upon the Lord. In distress, yes. the Lord answered me and set me in a what? A large place. And that's one of the most beautiful scriptures in the Bible right here. I called upon the Lord in distress. Don't run away from God. Run to God when you're in distress. When you need something, don't run away from Him. Don't hide from Him. Run to Him. I called on the Lord in distress. He answered me and set me in a large place. God will answer you and set you in a large place. Sometimes you just got to take time and think, like, just think back what he did for you. Like, wow. <laughs> you know, you thought you wouldn't survive, yet here you are increased. You thought you wouldn't survive, yet here you are blessed. You thought you wouldn't survive, Yet here, here you are with his blessing all over you. Yes, Lord. You've got his anointing. You've got education. You've got a job. You've got a spouse. You've got children. You know, you've got a gift and you've got a calling. You've got a place in his, in his 
you know, in his service. God has given us blessings every day. Sometimes we just have to think and just sit back and look at it. You know, just just look at it. <laughs> right? Just look at it. And remember what he's done when you called on him. Right? Verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. See, God is on our side. <laughs> That's what Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit about them. They said, God is on our side. Yes. You know, the other 12 spies, they were like, ah, they're too big, they're too strong. I don't know what we're going to do. They're going to eat us up. The land is going to eat us up. It's a big land. There's giants there. Joshua and Caleb, they had a what? Everybody say different spirit. Different. They had a different spirit. And they said, the Lord is on our side. The Lord had taken my part. That means my side. The Lord takes my part. Everybody say, the Lord takes my part. The Lord takes my part. The Lord takes my part. The Lord takes my part with them that help me. With them that help me. Amen. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. I shall see my desire upon them that hate me. Last week we talked about how the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And Psalm 37 talked about how, you know, he was anxious because of, uh, you know, all the things that the wicked were doing. And then he said, you know, be not anxious. The meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. All he has to do is be meek, be obedient, be soft-hearted and soft-necked towards God. Obey what he says. And we shall delight ourselves in the abundance of peace. We shall inherit the earth. We shall see our desire upon our enemies. The Lord takes my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. This all comes from trust in the Lord. It all comes from praying out to him, calling out to him, being confident in the Most High, and talking to him and holding to his hand every single day. That's what gives you victory over your enemies. Calling out to him day and night. <coughs> Verse 10. All nations compass me about. Same as Psalms 18. Your enemies surround you. All nations compass me about. They, I'm surrounded. Right? But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They compassed me about. Yea, they compassed me about. But in the name of the Lord, what? I will destroy them. They compassed me about like what? Like bees, like a swarm of bees. They are quenched as a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will what? Destroy them. So how faith? How does faith see your enemies? In the name of the Lord, you will destroy them. Amen? So... Your enemies cannot defeat you if you have faith in God. You will always overcome, even if it's a time thing, even if it's waiting, you know, even if it's in, based on an inheritance. The beast shall what? Inherit the earth. Sometimes there's a time factor involved, but you will always destroy your enemies. Those that come, you will see your desire upon your enemies. You know, God will uh, set you up over those that hate you. Amen? That's why the Bible says to love your enemies, you know, because you're going to be <laughs> victorious over them. So you have to love them. Amen. Uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter 6. <coughs> All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. When we talk about our enemies, we're not talking about, oh, we got to, you know, destroy people. And I'm going to Lord, I'm destroy you. Don't you ever say that to me. In the name of the Lord, I will destroy you. No, we, <laughs> we don't want to get ghetto, right? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. People are not our enemies, right? People are not our enemies. It's not the flesh and blood. It's the principalities. It's the powers. It's the rulers of wickedness in high places. Okay, the opposition against the will of God for your life is spiritual. It's not that person. It's the spirit behind that person. It's the demon that doesn't want to see you walk in holiness. You know, it's the devil that doesn't want to see you elevate. The devil does not want to see you walk in the calling that you have. The devil does not want to see you transform your family. The devil does not want to see you transform your generation. The devil does not want to see your people get set free from oppression. The devil does not want to see you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The devil does not want to see you being diligent in your work and prospering and rising to the top just like Joseph did. The devil knows the blessing that's on you. He doesn't want to see you walking in it. He wants to see you being discouraged and saying, oh, I can't do it. I can't do this. I can't do that. Right? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. Our battle that we win is against our spiritual enemies. And we are well able to overcome. We are well able to conquer everything that God has for us. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to Psalms 115. Talking about how faith sees your enemies. We are well able to overcome anything that God wants us to overcome. We are well able to take over the land that God has called you to possess. <coughs> Psalms 115. Okay, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Psalms 115 says, Not unto us, O Yah, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. So it's not for our glory that we overcome. It's for his glory. Not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. See, when, when the 12 spot, when the 12 or the 10 spies came back with an evil report, if you read the rest of that, that chapter in Numbers uh, 14, you'll see God was mad. He was like, these people don't believe in me. I can't believe this. I'm about to destroy them. And I'm going to take Moses. I'm going to take Joshua and Caleb and start a whole new nation with just the people that believe in me. And Moses interceded. He said, I'm going to pray for these people that God will not destroy them. Okay, And he said, God, he said, if you destroy these people, Everybody's going to see, and they're going to say, well, the Lord wasn't able to take them into the land. Okay? God does not, is not going to deliver you for, for your glory. God is going to deliver you for his glory. Okay? He's going to take you into the land because of his name, because it's his promise that he gave to you. It's his design that he gave for your life. Okay, we're the people that are called by whose name? His name. So when we fulfill the purpose that he has put in our bellies, when we fulfill the purpose that he has put in our DNA, when we fulfill the calling, the high calling that he has given us, it's for his glory. When we do it in holiness, okay, when we multiply, when we're fruitful, we multiply, okay, and we take over our uh, communities, and we take over our lands, and we preach the gospel, we spread his name, and we are doers of his word. That glorifies him. Who else is it going to glorify? He made us in his image, right? So when we fulfill the vision that he put in our bellies, it's glorifying to him, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. 
for thy mercy and for thy truth sake because you're showing his mercy all the mistakes you made he still but you put you on top that's showing his mercy all the mistakes you made you still end up forsaking the mistakes and walking in his truth that's showing his truth right so the glory that he's giving you is to glorify him is to glorify god is to glorify the most high because when you walk in his ways basically you're showing the whole world that his ways are good amen all right let's go to actually down to verse uh 14 mm, yeah 14 says, The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to who? The children of men. So the land that God has given us, the, the property that God has given us, the possession that God has given us in our calling, in our purpose, the earth has he given to us. So when we when he increases us, when he increases us and our children, when he causes our, us to prosper, he grows our families, and he causes our children to prosper, and he gives us the land and the, um, and the possessions he has given to us, it's for his glory. He's given it to us, okay? And we are blessed of the Lord which created heaven and earth. So it's a good thing, you know, it's a good thing for us to do what we're called to do, it's a good thing for us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. It's a good thing for us to walk in holiness and righteousness and to display his commandments, to display his wisdom in the earth, to display the strength he's given us, um, to obey him, to, to spread his gospel, and to spread it, not just preaching, but living it. It's important for us to have a full gospel, you know, a full gospel of obedience, a full gospel of, of truth, a full gospel of fruitfulness, you know, and a full gospel of just living in his ways. Amen. A full gospel of healing the sick, a full gospel of raising the dead, a full gospel of walking in deliverance. Okay, and really being a true transform a transformed people. A transformed people. It's it's good to go all the way with God. Amen. It's good to go all the way in God and not be scared to be different in the world, not be scared to, to not trying to fit in, but to create a whole new people, create a, a priesthood, to create a peculiar people, a holy nation. It's good to go all the way in the truth and to be set apart and peculiar for him. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to um, Luke chapter six. <coughs> I mean, Luke chapter four. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 16, it says, He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, hallelujah, and the recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the year of Jubilee, where all debts were canceled. And everything went back to the owner, the family of the owner. Verse 20, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Okay? So it's time <coughs> to preach the gospel to the poor. It's time to heal the brokenhearted. Okay? 
It's time to preach deliverance to those that are captive. Those that are captive with, uh, with devils, okay, spiritually captive. Those that are literally captive in this earth that are oppressed for their well, quote unquote race. Captive, the captivity of the people of the Most High. It's time to preach deliverance to them as well. All right? It's time to recover the sight of the blind, to preach to the blind and watch them see, to heal the blind, to heal the sick, and to, to set at liberty them that are bruised, those that, those that have been hurt, okay? Those that are brokenhearted, those that have emotional wounds, okay? Those that um, have been taken advantage of from childhood. There's ch children all over this world that have been taken captive, that have been trafficked, okay, that have been abused, right, that have been uh, fatherless, abandoned, right? It's time to preach the gospel to them. It's time to heal the brokenhearted. It's time to continue, like I said, in a full gospel. Truth, <coughs> repentance, healing, deliverance, okay, liberty, everything. <coughs> Okay, and so we can preach this gospel and watch people be set free. <coughs> this is the faith that we have, and this is the faith that we we walk in in the midst of our enemies. And Jesus sat down when he read that, and he said, "This day is this scripture, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears." And that's when he started his ministry when he came back from fasting. Okay, so it's time to heal those that are sick. It's time to heal those that are broken hearted, those that have wounded spirits. You wonder why people act the way they do. Sometimes it's because of what they've been through. Okay, and it's time to heal those people. It's time to preach the gospel of repentance. Preach the truth to teach, but also to heal the broken hearted. Okay, that's how we're gonna take over the land. That's how we're gonna spread the kingdom of God. Amen? Let's go to Mark chapter 6. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6. Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. Did I say much people? Much people. And was moved with compassion. His, he was moved with compassion that flowed from his belly toward the much people. Because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. So Jesus saw many people. And he saw them as sheep having without a shepherd. And his heart, his belly, was moved with compassion. And he began to teach them many things. Jesus saw how empty people were. He saw how much they were in need of leadership. He saw that they were sheep without shepherd. And he, and he was moved with compassion from his spirit. He began to teach them many things. There's another scripture in Matthew it says he saw them as sheep without a shepherd he was moved with compassion and he began to, to heal and he prayed that God would send laborers out okay so sometimes we see unbelievers as our enemies right but what did Jesus see he saw sheep without shepherds and he began to teach them many things and that's the same attitude we have to have I'm talking about how faith sees your enemies okay Sometimes the people that are against you, the only reason they're against you is because they're sheep without shepherds. You know, and God will move in your spirit with compassion to help teach them many things, to help heal them, okay? To help to pray for them and see, them, and see God move in their life. Because people have suffered many things, you know? And they're sheep without shepherds. And we have to be moved with compassion 
towards that. Because God is calling us to expand his kingdom. God is calling us to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal, to set at liberty the captive, to bind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to heal the brokenhearted, to, de- uh, to deliver those that are bound up. Okay, so we have to see them as God sees them. Jesus sees them as sheep without shepherds. And so we, as, we, as we move and we act, we move with the spirit of compassion. You know, and that's how we take over the land. That's how we take over and we spread the kingdom. Okay, everything you do, whether it's at your job, whether it's at school, whether it's at home, <coughs> everything is for the expansion of the kingdom and glory to his name. Okay? And so spreading the new covenant gospel, that's a part of it. Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Talking about how faith sees your enemies. Yes, you will defeat your enemies. Yes, you're able to overcome all opposition. But guess what? Our enemies are not flesh and blood. Our enemies are spiritual principalities and powers. And we have to see people as God sees them. God heals the brokenhearted. Jesus came to set free the captive. Okay, Jesus is moved with compassion on sheep without shepherds. Okay, so yes, we will conquer and overcome our enemies, but at the same time, we will be conquering healers. Okay, we will be conquering with compassion. We will be conquering and offering people the kingdom. We will be conquering, offering people healing. We will be conquering and taking over, offering people, teaching them many things, enlightening their eyes, and setting them free from demons, and setting them free from bondage. Okay, that's how we, that's how we take over the land. That's how we defeat our enemies, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, it says, You have heard that it has been said, You shall love your neighbor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute them, if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're called to love our enemies. We're called to be moved with compassion, not just, you know, say hi to your friends. Say hi to the people that don't like you. Say hi to the people that are opposing you. All right? Um, That we, what? May be children of our Father in heaven, just like we read in Psalms 115. Not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. When God increases us, when God blesses us, it's not so we can... You know, stun on people and say, I told you so, right? We need to continue to love people. We need to continue to treat them right. Why? Because God, he shines his sun on the just and the unjust. He sends rain on the evil and the unthankful. When, when, God, <coughs> when God rises the sun up every morning to give light, does everybody see it or just the righteous people? Everybody, everybody sees it. Okay, when he sends rain... So that we can grow plants and, and grow food. Is, do, do the righteous people get the rain? Or, or does, um, do just righteous people get rain? Or does everybody get rain? Everybody gets rain. So if we want to be like our Father in Heaven, we have to shine our sun on everyone. We have to, to give our rain out to everyone. We have to give blessings you know, to everyone and treat everyone with kindness. So we, that's why Jesus said, Love your enemies. Because when you love your enemies, you're able to spread the glory of God and spread the kingdom. Okay, so, yes, we will defeat our enemies. Yes, we will overtake. Yes, we will conquer all opposition. But we will do it in love. Amen. We will do it in love. We will do it with a spirit of compassion. We will do it with um, teaching them many, many things. We will do it healing the brokenhearted. We will do it setting free the captives and liberating people. In Jesus' name. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1. (coughs) 
Philippians chapter 1. Philippians, Colossians. See, when you have faith in the face of opposition, it's very important because it's part of how you get the victory. Just like Joshua and Caleb, they had what? Joshua and Caleb had what? A different spirit. A different spirit. We have to get this in our spirits. You know, write these scriptures down, meditate them, look at them over, look at them again. Because if you're having a battle in your life, these are scriptures you can use to strengthen yourself. Proverbs, uh, Philippians chapter 1. <coughs> Verse 28, it says, In nothing terrified. Everybody say, In nothing terrified. Nothing nothing terrified. Nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Okay? So when you're not terrified by your adversaries, that's a token. Everybody know what a token is? Token is something that you can actually have to redeem for something else. Like if you go to Chuck E. Cheese and they give you some tokens, and then you can go use those tokens, and it's like money. And when you have the token, you have what you need. Okay? So when you're not afraid of your adversaries, and when you're not terrified, that's a token. It's a sign that you, oh, I got, the, I got my token right here because I'm not scared. When you're not afraid of your adversaries, it's a token for you of salvation and it's a token for them of destruction. So when somebody threatens you or somebody is against you and you like, <laughs> you don't even care, they're like, oh man, he don't even care. It's a sign like, oh man, I'm, I'm doomed. It's a sign of doom, you know? I right, think about Haman um, when he was against... Uh, Esther, you know, and he was against uh, Mordecai, right? And um, I think of the time when uh, when Haman and, and Esther and the king were all together having dinner that time when she had set him up. And he was like, I'm doomed. <laughs> That's the, all of a sudden he was like, I'm doomed. I'm gonna be I tried to destroy them. But I'm going to be destroyed. That's the same thing that happens to us when we're not scared of our adversaries. Like when something comes against us and we're like, we're not even terrified by it. That's a sign of victory. That's a token of victory. It's like you've got the token. If you're not, if you're not terrified, you can cash in the fact that you're not terrified and you win. That's having a different spirit. That's why, guess what? Joshua and Caleb, they went into the land. Amen. Yeah. Everybody else died in the wilderness because they didn't believe. Joshua and Caleb, they had the token because of what? They weren't terrified. They're like, we are well able. We can do it. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Amen. We can do it. And guess what? They cast in that token, and they had their own property in the promised land, in the land of Canaan, Hallelujah. defeating those enemies. And we have to have our token. <clears throat> we have to see our enemies the way faith sees our enemies. We can't see our opposition and say, oh, well, I can't do it. You have to see it and say, I can. I am well able. Amen. They are bread for us. Everybody say, they're bread for us. They're bread it's for bread us. for us. We're going to eat. <laughs> We're going to eat. Uh, let's go to Psalms 86. The token, okay. When you're not terrified, <coughs> that's a token. <coughs> um, Psalms eighty six. Verse fourteen. It says, Oh God, the proud are risen against me. 
The assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and they have not set thee before them. Okay, so that's your enemies. They're they're setting themselves against you. They're violent. But you, O Lord, are God, full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant, and save the son of my handmaid. Verse seventeen. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed. Because you, O oh Lord, have helped me and comforted me. That's a wonderful prayer to pray. <coughs> it says, show me a token for good. God will show you a token for good that those may, those that hate you will see it and be ashamed. Like, oh man, I shouldn't have hated on him. God's going to bless him. God's going to bless her, man. I shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have came against her. God's going to bless her. She won. I give up. <clears throat> he won. I give up. I'm not even going to mess with him no more. I give up. God is blessing him. He says, show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. God will help you and comfort you. He'll show you a token for good so that those that hate you will see it. Just like the enemies of Israel. They knew that they were coming. They heard about the God that to let them cross the river, they're part of the Red Sea, you know, and they were ready. And I was like, man, these people, they're, they're going to win. Their God is stronger than us, you know. They were shaking in their boots, right? <laughs> Remember Rahab the harlot? They were like, man, everybody's scared of you, right? They're going to fight, but guess what? They're scared of you. They heard about your God, okay? That's the faith that we have. God is with us, and we are well able to overcome Let's see, uh, let's go to Proverbs 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an encouraging word, ain't it? Amen. Amen. Strengthen your soul. I called up to the Lord, he answered me, and strengthened me with strength in my soul. Glory. You are well able to conquer what God has called you to conquer. You are well able to conquer the territory he's called you to conquer. You're well able to fulfill the purpose he has given you. You're well able to serve him for an eternal reward. You're well able to live in holiness. Proverbs 15. It says, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Okay, so sometimes when... When you have a sorrowful heart, your spirit is broken. But a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. When you have a happy heart, when you have that different spirit, when you have that confidence, you have a cheerful countenance that comes. Verse 15 said, All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that as of a merry heart hath a continual feast. See, the ten spies, their days were evil. Oh, man, we afflicted. They're going to take, oh, man, we got we to gotta escape. The giants in the land, the land is going to eat us up. Okay, all the days were afflicted. They couldn't see victory. But Joshua and Caleb, they had, what, a different spirit. They said, he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. That's why they were like, they're bread for us. <laughs> Because they had a continual feast already in their heart. They had merry hearts. They were having a continual feast. So they were able to see their enemies in a different way than the other guys were. He that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Okay? So, are you having continual affliction? Or are you having a continual feast? Okay? All our days should be filled with the feast. The feast of the Lord. Talking to Him, calling out to Him, holding to His hand. What are you feasting on? What are you feasting on? Okay? When, you, when God is speaking to you, when you're calling out to Him, 
He's speaking to you. He's showing you his love. He's giving you revelation. That's what you should be feasting on. That's what builds your faith. So what are you feasting on? We need to be feasting on the word of the Lord. If we feast on his, if we're feasting on his word, if we're feasting on his presence, then we'll have a continual feast and we'll have a what? A merry heart and a different spirit about us. Okay? Yes, bad things happen. Okay, but what are you feasting on? Okay? Bad things happen. Evil things happen sometimes. Sometimes we get we go through pain. But guess what? What are we feasting on? We should continue to feast. Continue to feast on His Word. Continue to feast on His presence. Continue to feast on the things that He tells us every day when we call out to Him. Doesn't matter what happened. Doesn't matter if our suffering, our pain. What are we feasting on? The Bible says in, um, in Acts... The apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy after they got beat. They were left rejoicing. Why? Because they were feasting on something. They were feasting on the presence of God. What are you feasting on? He that is of a merry heart has a continual feast. So we have to set our hearts to feast on his presence. We have to set our hearts to feast on his word. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Acts chapter 11. Actually, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 34. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I have came not to send peace, but a sword. For I come to set a man at variance against his father, and daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be there of his own household. Sometimes when you stand for truth, your enemies will be even in your own household. But all this applies, guess what? You are well able to overcome the enemies in your own household. You are well able to love the enemies in your own household. You are well able to heal and deliver the enemies even if they're in your own household. You are well able to overcome and deliver them from the principalities that have them bound. We're well able to overcome even the enemies in our own household. Let's turn to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11 verse 14. Um, <coughs> it said, who shall tell thee words? Whereby you and all your what house shall be saved. So this is um, this is talking about when uh, uh, Peter went to preach to that what's that guy's name? Uh, Cornelius. Oh, Cornelius, yeah, Cornelius. And he said, "I will send." And we will send it to preach them words, whereas you and your house will be saved. Okay? So if you're a head of household, you and your house will be saved. Amen? Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Actually, verse 30. He said, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31. They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved and your house. Everybody say, and your house. And your house. See, we are believing for our house to be saved as well. And God can impact your house. God can change you, and he can change your future, your bloodline, forever. He can save everybody under your influence. He can save your children, and he will. If you believe on him, your future is changed, and your future is different. Amen? You and your household shall be saved, and you are well able to lead your family in the kingdom of God. You are well able to conquer the next thousand generations. Everyone in your seed, everyone in your bloodline will walk with God. Everyone in your bloodline will walk in righteousness. Everyone in your bloodline will be members of the kingdom and holiness. Okay? 
if you have a different spirit. You have to walk in faith. You have to believe these things. You have to believe that you are well able to overcome. You have to believe that you are well able to make a change. You have to believe that you are well able to stop the generational curses. And it stops with you. And it will, you will keep going and being fruitful. Let's go to uh, Psalms 112. <clears throat> you and your household shall be saved. Your future is going to be different. The future of your bloodline is going to be different. Your children, your future family, your children's future families is going to be different. You're going to conquer the land. You're going to conquer your purposes. It's going to be different from the past. If you continue in truth. Psalms 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is a man that fears the Lord and delights greatly in his what? Commandments. His seeds shall be what? Mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Let's go to verse 7. He shall not be afraid. What does that sound like? That sounds just like Joshua and Caleb. That sounds like not being terrified of your adversaries, right? He shall not be afraid of evil tidings or bad news. He shall not be afraid of bad news. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Who is that like? That's like Joshua and Caleb. They were not afraid of the enemy. Their hearts were fixed, and they trusted in the Lord. They said, we are well able. These people are bred for us. God is with us. Their defense has left them. The defense is with us now. God is with us. He's like, listen, man. We are, we're going to take over, right? So it said, his heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. So the righteous man is not afraid. His heart is fixed and trusts in God. He trusts in the Lord. He's going to see his desire on his enemies. He shall not be afraid. And it continues to say, He is dispersed. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. He's not greedy. Okay, he's not like, oh, it's just about me, blah, 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 me, 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 me. No, he said he's dispersed and he gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. Remember the token of perdition. When you're not afraid, the wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Why? Because the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in abundance of peace. Okay? There's, uh, the scripture says that a little while you're going to look, the wicked going to be gone. What happened to BET? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I can't. Where the wicked at? What happened to the strip clubs? Where, where they at? They're not here no more. We're going to look around and be looking for the wicked. Like, they gone. Like, all the land is going to be ours. Everything in the earth, all the technology is going to be ours. All the property, all the real estate is going to be ours. We're going to have control over all the governments. We're going to sit on this throne and reign with him. Not gonna have to worry about the evil. We're gonna look around and say, "What happened to all the evil people that were ruining the world and polluting the environment and poisoning our food and putting fluoride in the water and poisoning them? What happened? They're gonna be gone. Everything is gonna be all new. It's gonna be us in charge. Okay. So our hearts are fixed. We're not afraid of our enemies. We're not afraid of the conspiracy theories." Yes, we teach people and we expose truth, but we're not afraid of these things. We're not afraid of what's happening in the earth. Our hearts are fixed, trusting in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 16, verse 7. Proverbs 16. Talking about how faith sees your enemies. How does faith see your enemies? Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, 
he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So when you're a doer of the word and you you please God, you, de you delight greatly in his commandments and your ways, please the Lord, God will make your enemies to be at peace with you. God will make your enemies to be at peace with you. So you'll see your desire upon your enemies. You'll be able to, to preach the gospel to them. You'll be able to teach them. You'll be able to heal the brokenhearted. You'll be able to cast out devils. You'll be able to preach deliverance to the captives. And he'll even make your enemies to be at peace with you. Let's go to Psalm, uh, actually no, 1 Kings. <coughs> actually, let's go to Psalms first. No, let's go to 1 Kings first. <laughs> I'm just going to wait. I'm switching back, I'm switching back and forth. 1 Kings 8. He makes your enemies to be at peace with you. When your ways are pleasing to him, he makes your enemies to be at peace with you. You have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about spiritually. You have nothing to worry about physically. You have nothing to worry about. All you have to think about is hold it to his hand, call it to, on his name, and letting him fill you with his spirit and tell you what to do. And you will conquer, and you will be victorious. And everything that God has told you to do, you'll well, you are well able to conquer it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 Kings 8, verse 47. It said, Yet if they shall bethink or remember themselves in the land where they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them, what? <laughs> Captives. Saying, we have sinned and have done perversely and we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their, what? Enemies. enemies. So even if you've been taken captive in the land of your enemies, even if you sin against God as a people, which is who? The scattered tribes of Israel. If you've been taken captive all in the land of your enemies and you decide to return to God with your whole soul, your whole heart, you decide to pray to him to keep his commandments, to be saved by his son, and to walk in his kingdom. He said, and then so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gave it to their fathers in the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou their prayer <coughs> and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them what? Compassion before them who what? Carry them captive that they may have what? Yes. Compassion on them. So even if your enemies are those that are all around you, even if your enemies have carried you captive and made you slaves and persecuted you and set up prisons for you and turned laws against you and are shooting your sons in the streets and getting away with it, even if you're in a land of captivity, a land of oppression, a land of slavery, a land of colonization, even if you're in that land, God can help you right there if you turn to him. Amen. You are well able to conquer even in the land of your enemy. And he said, if you turn to him with all your heart, God will give you compassion before the people that carried you captive. Amen. And they will have compassion on you. God will turn the hearts of even your enemies that are in control and power over you and pour out compassion in their heart. How did God set the children of Israel free the first time from Egypt? How did he do it? When he set them out, what did he say? He said, I'll give you favor and they will give you, take the earrings off their ears and the gold and give it to you and to give them clothes and give it to you. Okay? God works the same way now. He does, he's not going to save us by our 
militants. He's not going to save us by hating our enemies. He's going to give us compassion with our enemies. Amen? Amen. He's going to give us compassion with the ones that have carried us captive. Okay? So how does faith see your enemies? God is going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. If you if your ways please him, he'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. He's going to give you the job. He's going to give you the wealth. They're going to hand over stuff to you. <laughs> They're going to give you back your property. They're going to pay you for what they took from you. They're going to reward you. You know, God's going to give you the reparations you need. God's going to give you compassion with the enemy. He's going to supply your every need. You're going to have you're going to conquer and you're going to be you're going to take over everything that God has called you to do. All you have to do is turn to him and do what he said. Okay, so we have to walk in this kingdom reality. We have to walk in this faith. How does faith see your enemies? Your your faith looks right past your enemies and sees God. Your faith looks right past your enemies and sees God and it overcomes and it sees what God can do. And you walk in his ways and you do it. And you are well able to overcome. You are well able to walk in his plan and your, his purpose for your life. You are well able to defeat any opposition that comes against you, whether it be spiritual or natural. You are well able to preach the gospel and teach people many things and have compassion flow from you. You are well able to overcome at captivity. You are well able to overcome oppression. You are well able to overcome miseducation. You are well able to overcome sin. You are well able to overcome demonic oppression. You are well able to overcome fatherlessness. You are well able to overcome abuse. You are well able to overcome. All these things are bread for us. They're going to feed us. All our opposition is going to feed us. It's going to be a part of our testimony. It's going to be a part of our healing people and flowing with compassion. Everything that you struggle with is going to be something that God is going to use to feed you and to change your family and your bloodline forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I bless you. I magnify you. I thank you that you cause us um, to prosper, that you are setting a table before us in the presence of our enemies. I thank you, though, Father, that you are giving us compassion among those that carried us away captive. I thank you that nothing can stop us, that we are in no way terrified by our adversaries in the name of Jesus. And that's our token of salvation. That's our token of victory. We can cash that in. We can cash in our faith. We can cash in our lack of fear, Father. Because we believe in you. And we thank you for, for, uh, for, for, for delivering us. We thank you for showing us a token for good. We thank you for um, defeating everything that is, is coming against us, Father. You are our Father. You are our helper. You are our provider. You fight for us. You are our defense. Yes, you, Hallelujah. You. you are our Hallelujah. defense. Father, this is how we fight our battles, Father. Yes. We think they look like we're surrounded. Hallelujah. We're surrounded like by bees. But in the name of the Lord, we will destroy them, Father. We are surrounded you, by bees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's more with us than there are with Thank them. You, yes. Lord. There's more angels with us than there are with them, Father. Yes, Lord. There's nothing that can defeat us when we walk in your ways. Yes, there's nothing that can defeat us when we talk to you yes, and we cry Lord. out to you. There's nothing that can, can, can defeat us when we sing to you. There's nothing that can de- defeat us when we obey your commandments and, and our ways please yes. you. Hallelujah. We will march into the land. We will march into your promises. We yes. will march into the purpose that you've given us. Yes, we will Lord. march into the vision and the calling that you have for us. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. We will march into it. And we are well able to overcome. Thank and every you. opposition will be bread for us. Yes. Every opposition will be a testimony. Yes. Every opposition will be victory. Yes. And every opposition will be a chance for us to expand the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will increase us and our children. Hallelujah. The heaven is the Lord's, but the earth have you given to the children of men. Thank and the meek Lord. will inherit the earth. And we will delight ourselves in the abundance of peace. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. For a thousand Bless generations you, more. Bless In you, Jesus' God. name. Bless Hallelujah. You, God. Amen. Bless Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Bless you God. Bless your name.